Hello, guys, and we are live again for our weekly question and answer session with myself and the infamous Mr. Christopher Palmer. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, guys, so we're back for our usual stuff question and answers, whatever you want, ask us. We'll try and do our best to help you. Um, also, while we're waiting for people to join in, let us know where you're from and all of that kind of good stuff. And um, yeah, just let's do some more of the some more of the same. Um, but while we're waiting for people to come in, Chris, what is new with you and your life? What what have you been up to this week? Uh well, this this week I. Uh... I, I mean, I don't want to say maybe I, I, you know, I'm trying to get more into getting sites and, you know, rebuilding them and setting them up and, uh, you know, like buying sites that's already like kind of working. I never really did that. I always just started from, you know, beginning to end. So I'm getting more into that. I bought three of them. Uh, I think I'm going to share one with the audience and maybe do it. Maybe I'll have you. That's why, you know, maybe do like a roast or something. Like, how do you evaluate? You know, I think that would be helpful for everybody. I want to start showing people not, you know, I know SEO, but maybe not that side is good, you know? Yeah. So progression. Uh, I think that it would be good for everybody. So that's what I've been focusing on that, you know, the, my son, my daughter, she's at home for school and my wife's like, oh, we should keep her home, you know, for a quarter. I'm like, is it time for her to go back yet? Cause you know, she's like, asking, dad, how do you do this? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Ask mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it's madness, madness. So when do the skills go back over there? Are they even going back? Oh, yeah, they're they're back in, in my area, in some areas here, because it wasn't as bad. Like, you know, the kids are already back, but you get the, for this school where we're at, it's like a, a better school or whatever. You you they give us the option. Uh so obviously for me, I don't want to risk my family. So I'm like, yeah, keep her home, you know. Uh so, but we're, I wanted to see like, Hey, what, is there any cases? Is there anybody sick? So I wanted to wait the first quarter and then maybe send her back in, you know? Yeah. The first yeah. Quarter. What's that? The first quarter. Uh, yeah, the the first, first, yeah. Like the first quarter, you know, when the first report cards come. Yeah. That's so, a fucking long time, man. <laughs> well, I'm not, listen, I'm not judging. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be taking the risk. To be honest, by him. That's what I said. That's why I was gonna keep her in just to see. For for my son, like you know, as time is progressing, like I, as I'm starting to notice, I think that you lose. I, well, I don't want to talk about my opinion, but my opinion is you lose the ch the children once they go to school. So for my son, I want to keep them. I want to just teach them homeschool and teach them, you know, you know what you really need here. Here's this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna stick with homeschool for him, and oh. or have like a lady come in because they're cheap, you know. Have a yeah. Trip. Then and teach them here's, here's how you read here's how you do math all right now it's time to how do you produce that's what you need do you have an idea and what can you produce and put into the market that's what matters so yeah. i just want to train them right <laughs> exactly but you've got to do what is right for your family as well and what you feel is right so Always. um but yeah the quarter the first quarter is is a, a long, long run, long run. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know why that doesn't surprise me with you like I was just expecting to so yeah, I've just waited half a year just to see if anyone died before the sent back. That's what I, that's um, what I, that's what I, <laughs> that's exactly right. Did anybody die? Because I don't want to send my kid in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's um, the truth. Yeah, we shouldn't be laughing about people I, dying. I, I, but, yeah, hey, I'm, sorry. Was, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right, I shouldn't be. But you but, know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but we have Etimars here, David Ogletree. Hey, guys. you. Christian Grey, uh, is it the Christian Grey? Um, he thinks my TikToks are pretty funny, so thank you for that. We have the usual Stephen Buchanan, Andy Woolley, Paul Hogden, Hayden Cock or Koch. Um, but there is some questions here, so we can get bogged into the questions, guys. Cool. Uh, don't be impatient because sometimes we are like 20 or 30 minutes behind with the questions. Um, so we'll get to your questions as quickly as we possibly can. But Clan Property, interested in how you guys do your on-page topic clustering, uh, example, keyword research tools, how many support pages, etc. So what, what is your strategy, Chris? 
the strategy is for me, I'm I'm looking at a, a the top or pillar piece of content, my target keyword. Who's ranking for my target keyword? It, whatever market I go into, who's ranking? How is their structure set up? What pages are they building? What kind of traffic are they getting? Uh, I, I'm I'm basing my content off of what I see is winning. Um, and I'm basing other supporting articles to the main idea off of, hey, if this guy built out a, a page, he's getting traffic on this one, but not this one. So I'm just building out what's winning. That's it. Cause I'm, I don't know, lazy is the word, but I want, if I'm going to build it, I want it to be worth it. Yeah. I think you have to analyze the competition and see what they're doing and, uh, you know, how many support pages does the, the competition have? However, I'm not lazy. I'm a bit more OCD with shit. So if I see you having, say, five supporting pages around about the term Black Cat SEO and you've got your main page and you've got five supporting pages, I might even go for 10 just to fucking... Really? Yeah, uh, just just if if I can, you know, <coughs> because there's, there's enough room within the Black Hat world to have 10 support articles i could have 110 really you know there's a lot of scope for that i know in certain niches like there's only so much you can do in terms of supporting pages but it depends it also comes down to what else you've got available to you as well like you know that you know if you wanted to do some black hat shit you could come up with 50 videos if you had to or 50 oh, yeah. uh, 50 blog posts sorry um if you had to so um i think it always comes down to um, that as well and how hard you're hard prepared to push it listen it's no different from what we do in tiktok <laughs> not tiktok youtube um you know i i seen you popping up for black hat seo so i decided to make three new black hat seo videos <laughs> so if you google or if you youtube black hat seo the your top page is um <laughs> between me and chris and uh, chris is throwing out new stuff and trying to to smash you at the top and um, it's a good healthy competition but oh yeah um it's the same thing with seo you're you're going to attack it in the same kind of way and uh <coughs> yeah so t in terms of topic clustering see what people are doing what topics they're going after and um, you know you can also use things in the same rush like the keyword and um, keyword gap analysis and don't just use one competitor you can use up to five and find, you know, the, the gaps between five or 10 or 15, whatever, how deep you want to go is really entirely up to you. And um, find those gaps and smash the, the living daylights out of it. More The more content, the more long tails, the more keywords, the better. You just make sure that you're not, um, you know, cannibalizing or, or anything like that. Try and, you know, keep them loosely, like, you know, you know, you don't want overlapping um, in terms of content, but um, I would throw as much out there and then try and uh, see that. Slightly, I love that. So, I how I do it. I'm say on a tighter resource. What I'm doing is I'm looking. Okay, here's the top level. All right, here's their supporting articles. Out of those supporting articles, which ones are getting traffic? Then what mm -hmm. I do is duplicate those pages. You're saying do that, but then do ten more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like Maybe that. Not. Like throw enough shit out there to, to make it stick. Um that's awesome. And why why not? You know, it, it all comes down to budget and time, I guess. But um right there. But yeah. Um so here is Nicole coming from Christian background. I never believed in spiritualists. Um this could be so stressed at home point. Uh, I'm not sure that's actually for this and um, so we will uh i got a do... pop filter people were yelling at me i got it guys <laughs> <laughs> oh, one. i got a red one too mr ken city from bangkok hello my site is number two on one particular keyword it used to be number one this number one site is more niche specific while my site covers a broader niche with the higher domain authority and page authority What's your thoughts on how to beat them? Send more traffic, dude. You know, um, out beat them. You know, paid ads, like whether it's um, AdWords. I couldn't get the fucking word out there. The AdWords or Facebook ads. Um, also, what I would do is look at POP or, or Surfer SEO and compare, like, 
Mm-hmm. You're saying that you should be number one potentially with that statement. Should you really be? You know, right. is your content better than that, guys? Is everything on point? Also run it through POP or, or Surfer. Make sure you are better than him, not in your opinion, but using a tool, you know, that, that kind of tells you that and send more traffic to it. And, uh, you know, it's, it, when it comes to the top couple of results, <clears throat> in my opinion, is it doesn't come down to building another link or getting your getting your domain rating up or your domain authority up. It comes down to traffic and engagement. So that would be my first thing. But, Chris, what about you? hundred a million percent that that you hit the nail on the head with the traffic the difference between 10 and 1 starts to be that traffic and the engagement but next to to add on top of that surfer and and or pop pop's cool tool too i started with pop and then was moved on the surfer but another piece to look at would be start looking at the referring domains and see if you could pull any of those links that he's getting see if you could go and build those too the ones that are already being rewarded by google so uh, everything that we just said, do that. And don't focus on one keyword. Take a look. He could be getting a lot of engagement and traffic to the site because he has other pages. So, and that could be engaging on the site, which is back to traffic and CTR. So build out more pages, take a look at the links. And I think you'll be, you'll move on. Yeah. Um. Good answer. Ken Green. Is Chris doing any PBNs these days? Uh, for my personal stuff, like stuff that, you know, say like the email page that I show people, um, no, I don't, I don't send any PBNs. Uh, now if somebody like out of the nine people that I do deal with eight, no, I lost another one, but out of the people that I deal with, yes, we use, uh, guest posts is what there is the, uh, is the code now. <laughs> I do buy guest posts. Yes. Yeah. Um, not for my site though. No. Nah. Um, Ah, that's interesting, but again, it's just what guys you're putting on it, you know, they're all the same bloody thing, uh, the, the, that's the reality of it. Um, Randy Rode is here, Javid Hakimi is here, TS is here, Kyle Crawford is asking every time we go live, um, he gets notifications um, on LinkedIn, that happens automatically, Kyle, if you're friends with someone and they go live, it just it, it notifies you of them going live. Um, only a select few people have the ability to go live on LinkedIn, I believe. Um, <laughs> why they let me go, I have no idea. But, um, yeah, so people that do have that ability, you will be notified. And uh, I think you can turn those notifications off if they are a pain. Um, so, um, yeah, so hopefully it's not bothered you too much. But, uh, yeah, LinkedIn does it automatically. TS, what is your secret sources of traffic? Have you got any secrets, Chris? I mean, I, I don't think that there there is a secret. I mean, it's, you know, building content that is highly optimized. As far as secret traffic, I, I think it's where the traffic is coming from. And I think, you know, I paid, you know, any other sources. No, there's, there's not a secret. Nothing that I haven't talked about. Um, I think that there is... What you potentially suffer from, T, is you think there's something being held back. I used to always think like that as well. Like, these guys are not telling me everything. Pretty much, obviously, I've not heard everything that Chris has ever said online. But, um, you know, certainly from, from the shows I've done with Chris and the times I've dealt with him, you know, it, it always has been, you know, there, nothing can beat real traffic, you know, whether it's paid, whether it's this, that, or the next thing. Bots... You know, it's debatable of, of how um, useful those are. But I think most of us out there, you know, how do you force traffic? You know, you can use a big email list to to force traffic onto a page and all that kind of stuff. But you have to think outside the box, but it's got to be real traffic. There is no other real secret source, like a place where we can go and buy this stuff up or whatever. Um, and I think that that's the case for a lot of people who learn their SEO they always think you're holding back on stuff. You know, is there something else that you're not telling us about? And very often it's not. That's not the case. So um, just in case you're thinking like that, Tia, you know, <laughs> it's, it's you know, sometimes it's just as simple as what we're saying. Um, the traffic works. I, I recently, because I was trying, because I have the training for <laughs> manipulation, Craig was beating me. 
So I started sending clicks over, right? And now I, I took the position. I don't have any links going to the page. Uh, the content is nothing uh, and ranking number one for a nothing term, but still I was all the way <laughs> in Never Never Land. So clicks and traffic make a massive difference. Uh, What's it that comes out again? Click through rate manipulation. You dirty bass. You really want me for that? I'm beating right. you for that. I'm going to share my screen now. <laughs> you I were beating me. I had to. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, click through, click through rate manipulation. Oh, click through rate, right. Yeah. I might even be, I'm sure I'm taking CTR too, but click through rate manipulation. Oh, I'm curious too. You're in Scotland. Oh, man. Chris, oh. I'll Oh, see, on my end, I'm I'm number one. Oh, that's interesting. Who's there in your position? That's Julie. Yeah, and that's that uh, Julie. But I'm going to try because Mines doesn't go after click through. Mines is just CTR. Oh, um, is it? I think it's cool how you're you're um you're bringing back different results than me. Um, bloody CTR. hell! Looking all over the place. I'm down oh, here. I'm, number, I'm there too. Um, so you are you are above me, and I'm going to take that back. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> What you also see is I took the three video slots as well. Um, yeah, yeah, you got that. I was, I just figured, hey, for you know, I have the training. I, what better way to show it works than hey, I'm ranking for it? Yeah, no, <laughs> and exactly. the page sucks. <laughs> this, this is another important lesson, guys, out there for for anyone watching. Don't switch off and just assume no one's going to come and get your search terms. So I've not looked at that search term, and uh, you turn your back, and Chris is fucking lean clicks on it, and. Um, steals your position, so um, so. That's I, just what, wanted, I don't want that many. <laughs> that's what a supposed friend does to you. Think what your competition are fucking going to do to you. Um, so yeah, no, it's all good fun. Um, Viddy Paul, um, please explain how much backlinks is safe from how much referring domains. Like, I think that's what you're saying. How much referring domains is safe. I mean, when we're talking about backlinks, we need to talk about uh, risk tolerance. You know, I think that it, it all comes down to risk tolerance, but what's safe is debatable. Uh, but I would always look at who's in position, how many links do they have? And then you need to figure out from that point forward, how many links can I build that are equal quality in X amount of time? I, I, I don't think it's a matter of how many are safe. It's a matter of risk tolerance and how long it'll take you to get there. Because obviously... You need to get X amount to reach a certain position if all your other optimization is in place. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's other ways to rank, but uh, I mean, links are definitely important. Yeah, um, don't think. I mean, it's not humanly possible for you to build links to the point where you're going to get penalized as such. If you're going to use automation, that's where you need to be careful. But if you're going to go down the route of getting good quality, relevant links for your website. Either your budget won't be enough to, to trigger those filters, um, or you're you're not, uh, or either you you've got way too much money. But um, but just go whether it's five, whether it's fifty five. These are all perfectly natural figures to get. It's when you start getting five thousand or fifty five thousand is when Google's going to go, hey, you know, is is there something going on here? You know, a good PR campaign can get you fifty, a hundred links. Just like that, you know, speak to Randy Rodey in the live chat. And, you know, that's a guy that picks up those kind of links for fun. So you don't have to worry about, you know, figures, you know, a couple of hundred or whatever. But uh, in most cases, people are getting 5, 10, 15, you know, that type of thing of real good quality links. And that should be enough. Um, Vidi oh, Paul. Uh, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to interrupt. So when you're looking and analyzing, uh, you're not looking at, the amount of quality links that they have and then using that as a benchmark? Um, do, do you know what? Probably not, no. Um, oh, no. Like, you probably should, but I'm that arrogant that I don't even care what they've got. I know that the systems and the processes and the the people I've got, you know, vendors and stuff like that, that, that I'm going to be able to go out there and beat them regardless of what they've got. So I don't really dig deep into that. I mean, if you were going to do outreach or something, then fine. But, you know, I've got my own process in my head. Regardless of what that guy's got, 
I'll have a, a process and a budget potentially in my head of what I'm going to spend and how I'm going to spend that budget. Um, and, and nine times out of ten, that's enough. If, if I was struggling after that, then I may go and analyse the, the other person's backlinks at that point. But, um, you know... Oh, I see. That's... That's usually uh, the starting point. Like people ask me, I say, okay, see who's ranking, see whatever links you can get that they have, get those, and then if, then see where you land. But you would do it in reverse. Yeah. Go power first. And then if you're still struggling, then go out and start doing yeah, it. I'm going out to build my own type of power. You know, whether that's citations, guest posts, some tiered link building, blah, 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 blah. You know, I've got my own set. Bang. Like, let's, it's like the content thing. Throw enough out there and mm -hmm. then fine tune that stuff. But, do you always need to fine tune it? Absolutely not. So, you know, sometimes you doing my strategy will work in, in most niches, and it's only those real competitive ones where you maybe do need to to go back and and you know analyze and dig deeper and you know replicate what the other guys doing a bit more or whatever. So, um, but yeah, I'm confident in my my own strategy. <laughs> Um, <coughs> Viddy Paul, links from Alexa ranking lists are good or not? I've not actually seen that question asked for a long, long time. Um, remember, you used to be able to buy gigs and stuff to push your Alexa ranking. Um, is that still a thing? Does anyone do it? I don't. And Chris, do you? No, uh, that's like those. I forget. Like, remember those Jack and Jill links, or I forget what they were called. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Remember those? A couple they, they they got their network slammed years yeah. ago. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but yeah. I, I don't know if it's Jack and Jill or... I forget. It was something like that, though. It was yeah. Cool, though. But it that's was... what that reminds me of. <laughs> yeah. Very old school, yeah, so old. Yeah. avoid that. Um, Viddy. Ashton Lobo, thank you for coming. Um, after I built some guest posts, how long should I wait to see the change in rankings so that I can go and build more only if needed? Um, I think you probably get the wrong mindset there. Ashton, um, I see Chris like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you know, when you're building guest posts, don't just stop the, the, the minute that, uh, like, like I was saying before with, with Chris, like, I've got my own process, I will have a rough idea in my head of what I'm going to do, like, you know, whether that's building 10 guest posts and then building tiers and shit like that, that's going to be my strategy for the first, you know, four to six months. Um, should I stop halfway through and see, oh, I might already be ranking? I could, but even if I do get to number one, I want to confirm that's my spot and get a bit ahead of the competition and solidify that, and that's where you shouldn't stop. Keep going, throw enough at it. Um, Chris, is that the kind of thing that you would do? Yeah, if, if the resources permit, you know, uh, I'm building links until I rank, so that's yeah. usually... Yeah, exactly. I don't stop. I'm not going to build one and then be like, okay, wait two weeks or 30 days. No, I just keep, I would just keep moving forward. Yeah, that's uh, definitely the way forward. So do that, Ashton. Gary Patterson, good morning, gentle people. Good morning, Mr. Patterson. Good morning. Mark Flanagan, <coughs> what other ideas do you have to power up second level links other than SU Autopilot and Google Stacks? Um, niche edits. PBNs, fucking press release, press releases, any anything really. You you know you can power this stuff up. The the, the point here, uh, and uh, Chris will probably back me up on this. It's got to be cheap. Um, you know, you're looking at cheaper, riskier options, and you know, even at the moment, Chris will. And I heard Link uh, Chris say that a link's a link at the end of the day for now. So you could also use that. Who gives a toss what relevance it has? Just powerful links. You know, any old crap that you can get on, cheap as hell, is is what is working for now. And uh, that's something you can use to power that stuff up. Yep. You know, Chris, as Chris says, a link is a link just now. Future-proofing your website, you obviously want to try and make it relevant and all that stuff. But when it comes to Tier 2 links, um, automation, Google Stacks, and all of that kind of stuff, any old shit will do is 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 the way I look at it. Is that similar, Chris, to you? A hundred percent. And the only time I would switch my mindset from a link is a link is when I go to uh, SEO by the sea and when I read a patent that's hey, it's they've changed the way they analyze, and I'll switch my tune. But for now, 
links a link, especially if it's out second tier, third tier. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, but it's it's got to be low cost as well. Um, you don't want you probably don't want to be throwing too many PBNs if you're building them. If you know someone that's selling a network of them or whatever, go for it. But in my opinion, niche edits is probably my what favorite. you're looking for. So or SAP or something like that. But same yep. thing. Um. <clears throat> Tech Jackie, what's your thoughts in PR? Do they still work? What do you think, Chris? Uh, a press release? Yeah. Do I think that they have effect? I think that for a start of a campaign, uh, I think that press releases still have uh, a purpose. Yes. I do think that they're still a valuable asset to any SEO starting a campaign. Yes, I do. I, I will also add to that, Tech Jackie. Um, so I use a guy who's actually in the live chat or he was randy Rodi, um who has a press release service now whether you use this for link juice or whether you use it for uh what chris has said in several occasions of different shows is that kind of out from the outset building your brand and taking up as much of the landscape as you possibly can mm -hmm. those press releases can help with that as well and, you know, even when I get that, you know, if I Google my own name just now, one of the press releases Randy last done for me is on page one for my brand. Um, so these that. things can be quite powerful. I think the website's apnews.com. Um, but press releases, I think, also diversify your backlink profile. It, you know, builds a bit of trust and all that kind of stuff. So it's very much part of my, you know, initial strategy and ongoing strategy i'll buy gigs from randy um on a regular basis and um, based on that and uh, obviously there's link just to be to to be gotten from some of the the websites as well now i have actually got randy on a a, a podcast and um, which is coming out next week and we spoke in depth about pr and what kind of sites you're getting on and obviously you've got your likes of Yahoo Finance and you know some of these market other ones, watch. but <laughs> what yeah, Market Watch is another one. <laughs> uh, so you, but what Randy is also saying is even in the in their niche, the news industry or whatever, someone will buy a website called OhioNews.com, and it's just a fucking PB or, or I guess post site that people are just smashing content out. So it's no different from what we're doing, building links. And does some of that stuff pass value? Of course, it'll pass some kind of value. So, um, yeah. So, if you're ever looking for that, you know, shoot me up or, or find Randy Rody, um, 38digitalmarket.com, I think is his website. But he's in the live chat. Give him a shout or I can put you in touch if you want to tie his gigs out. Um, <coughs> Gary Park. 38 Digital Market. Yeah. I'll put you in touch if you want to look at it um, after yeah. I can send you a direct link. Um, he's a great guy. does a great job for me and uh, can't speak highly enough of him. Um, but Gary Patterson, if you guys are reviewing sites, this was my first ever site on Weebly, and it's a lead gen, newcastletreecare.com. Um, let's have a look for a laugh. We're not reviewing sites on this one, but... Uh, Let's have a laugh at your Weebly. New Castle Tree. Weeblies, Weeblies are a are a um a special little gem. Um I won't get into why, but I think that they uh along there's a couple other sites that I found just like it. Just the way their structure, it, it's uh Weeblies are fun. <laughs> They're an interesting here is the site basic contact form in the right. Full of content. Mm -hmm. um, now, what I'm actually going to do is put this into Ahrefs and see what they think of it. Um, put a dot Weebly at the end, too. <laughs> <laughs> DR33. Um, you've got 65 organic keywords. Um, I mean, I'm not a fan of Weebly websites as such. Um, uh, you just don't have full control of everything that you need to have control of. Um, but listen, if it works locally and, and it gets some traffic and it brings in leads, who are we to? I think, to, I could, to um, 
I, I think they're nice for a second tier. I think they have yeah. they have value. I think just the way they're made, you know, when you actually buy the domain and it's sitting on Weebly, um, just the way the structure is is all I'll say. That they're I think they have a lot of benefit. Yeah, for local. For local. But, uh, yeah, we won't we won't analyze that. We'll leave that for Itamar and his show. Um, because I'm not the best person to be slagging off the look of anyone's website. Um, not <laughs> my bad. Design. <laughs> Design's <laughs> not my strong suit either. Not at all. Um, blogging capital. How to rank a competitive keyword for a new website, Chris? That's. I mean, that's a, a such a short sentence, but such a big question. How to rank a competitive keyword for a new website? To give you a short answer, because it, this could go on for a whole show. Uh, the very first thing that I would do is head out to the SERP and see who's currently winning. Who's winning? What are they doing? How old's our site? How many pages do they have? What kind of links do they have? You know, what are they doing? Why are they winning? Why are they in position for that keyword? And then I would just transfer all of that data over and build out. That's going to give you the best opportunity to at least be in, you know, in position to rank. So that's step one. I mean, that's, you know. That would be the definitely, that's what I would do. <laughs> Who's winning? Then it's rinse and repeat. You know, that is the job after that. You know, analyze <laughs> again and uh, dig deeper and dig deeper uh, until yep. you get there. But also send traffic and stuff as well. To get that top slot, it's not easy. Uh, you know, Chris has said, like, for the search term CTR manipulation, it, it's not an overly competitive keyword. No. Uh, people don't know what it is. And you probably could rank for that with clicks alone, which Chris, well, I didn't have any links pointing at my page. Um, Chris has went and over dominated that. So also bear in mind that traffic can also lift you up there um, as well. It's the proof's in the pudding there. So uh, I did the same thing for drive stacks. Yeah. Uh, the other guys were beating me, and I was like, uh, they've been sitting here for mad long. How can I win? Well, that's <laughs> the trick. <laughs> I don't know. Curiosity, Chris. Yes. Um, back to the the CTR one for me. Was that your Android emulator clicks, or was that micro workers or something else? What were you saying? Uh, uh, well, um, I used a emulator, mm -hmm. uh, but I've just switched uh, the type. We've talked about it before. You know, I don't want to mm -hmm. talk about it public, but uh, it was emulation. Uh, mm -hmm. It was emulation clicks with a. Uh, personal sim cool no that's my home that's phone good. but yeah i mean I'll, I'll tell you what i what i use but i just figured out a way to embed into an html page because like like we talked i was going to offer it as a service but i was like ah, eh, just keep it for myself and then people that i work with i've been doing it for them yeah yeah so, <laughs> we're gonna have to beg chris for more information guys sorry we did try and get it out <laughs> often but <laughs> it's working i mean it's winning right now like i don't know you know you know how things go yeah, yeah, it's working. Um, so, guys, also make sure that you do give us a like um, on the video. That engagement is really key. And if you're really generous and you're fed up and, and you know, waiting for a good question to come along, also give us a little comment on the video as well. Just a hello, great show, guys, whatever. That engagement does help us a lot. So would appreciate that as well. Oh, um, oh sorry. No, go carry on, Chris. I, I was going to mention, if because I know that you're messing around with stuff, what I'm starting to notice, and I don't mind sharing publicly, is I really like the mobile, right? But as I'm testing with these other emulators, I'm starting to see that residential uh, is pretty, pretty good. Really good, you know? Ooh. So just as anybody that's going out there and they're trying, you know, I think that mobile is definitely optimal. But you run into a lot of trouble when you're using a back connect mobile proxy. It sometimes doesn't like to play well with certain systems. So, and that's where I was running when I was using a certain type of emulator. And I was like, I just started running traffic through the residential. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is popping. Yeah. <laughs> working. You know, it's popping up. So, anybody that's playing around out there, that's, you know, helpful. Thank you for that little golden nugget. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on to Umar Farouk. If I barely see 50k results for a keyword and I target such keywords on a brand new website, would it still go in the sandbox? Do you even believe there is a sandbox, Chris? Uh, 
I think that there's a evaluation stage, you know, for a brand new website. I think that there is a certain period of time uh, before you, I think Diggity calls it authority mode. I like that terminology. So I think that there is a certain time before you go into authority mode where everything, you just put out something and boom, it's on the second page or first page. Uh, so I think that there is a time, uh, a time period before you hit that threshold of, hey, the site is just ranking for everything, you know? So if that's a sandbox, then yes, I believe that there is. And how long would it take to come out of that? In your opinion, three months, six months? Um, I, I think that I've noticed at least at least 60 days at least 60 days to 90 days you know before it, it just seems like i'm putting out pages they're they're indexing a lot faster things are just moving a lot better i would say not we'll say 90 days would be if i had to put a number on it 90 days yeah 90 days that's ah, cool just interested to hear what your your thoughts what do you think are. do you know what i don't even know anymore because i don't really play around with brand new websites as such mm. um you know, a lot of the stuff that I do is with expired domain names and stuff. So it's been that long uh, since I've really felt anything like that properly. Um, what I would say is, and, and, and this was just my own mindset, like I'm not sure if there's a sandbox or there's just a delay on when you're building links and getting content and whether that, that stuff's passed. Like even now, we build links, right? And I was actually speaking to Mr. Paul Hogden about this earlier um, on a, on a just a private Zoom call. And you know how how long does it take to pass link? Just you know, is there a a delay timer on there, like a month, two months, to, to the juice is fully passed over? Is it? No one knows the answer to that question. Now, is that something that we see with a brand new website that? You know, obviously things get crawled and indexed, but that value is not passed across right away. And that's where people say, no, there's a sandbox, there's this and there's that. Yeah. Obviously, with a brand new website, you're going to feel things being slower because your website's not trusted. It's like being a new guy at school. People are like, oh, what's this? Um, you know, people are not in there talking to you. But um, so there could be, there might not be. But I always just had the mindset of <coughs> load up the website with, with enough content um blast it with links and by the time you know you actually put your website up started drip feeding the content on got your citations and then done your kind of link thing you were three or four months in anyway and then you start to analyze the results i'm not like month one what's moved what's moved what's moved and that's what i was trying to get at the point across earlier go away and do what you know works don't sit there and obsess every day over whether you've jumped up a position or two go and do some shit and let it kick in and then analyze it don't sit there going oh is there a sandbox or should i do this or even you know what, what the other guy was saying should i stop building guest posts just now to see what i get and you know i've got this in my head i'm doing this and this is what i this is my strategy That's right and then i'll analyze it and it may be the wrong thing to do. I don't know, but that's that's the way I look at it anyway. So hopefully that helps you, Uma. That was a bit of a rant, but helpful <laughs> rant. Helpful <laughs> rant, yeah. Um, plan properly. <laughs> you know, that would make a cool name for a show. Helpful rants by Craig Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, oh, sorry. Clan property follow up regards to off-page tiered linking. How do you guys use your anchor text in tier two or tier three? Exact, broad, or market focused? Anything will do, in my opinion. Yeah. I, it, for when I go out to, uh, if I'm building just anything to a second tier, it's generally always a branded or an exact, branded exact. Like if I send a link list out to, you know, whoever, Johnny builds links 420, then it's exact branded, exact branded. Yeah, I think... You can be riskier because it is tier two and tier three. So um, a lot of people are like, should I still mix it up that much? I mean, to be honest, I still mix it up. I'm not going to lie. Um, just just to mix stuff up because I, I think that's the best thing to be doing. <laughs> but um, you could get away with just doing exact match and I don't think it would really harm you at all, um, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, I should probably take my own advice and do more exact. Um, what's, your, what's your opinion on... Uh, a brand mention or a co-citation what's your personal opinion on that i mean i would much rather have a link oh yeah of course <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> um, i mean listen if you can get mentioned on these places does it does it help 
Um, you know, I'm pretty sure that Google, between everything and all the linking and Google entities and knowledge panels and GMBs and everything, they can ab they're able to tie all of this stuff together. Mm -hmm. And would a brand mention on, you know, the BBC, B, you know, or CNN for you guys or whatever, um, be something that, that passes some kind of value? Probably. Um, but it's there's probably only a small amount of websites that, that I would consider that to, to, to be that powerful. You know, if yeah. it's some crappy little junky news website, um, then I, I, am I going to think the same way about it? Absolutely not. I want that link. And uh, so... Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I set up, uh, I bought like a real, a crap, I just bought it like a $12 domain and I set up Scrapebox and I just let it, you know, run just comments with the brand 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 just to see and nothing so i was just curious you know <laughs> was my own little test i was just curious to see yeah i think I you. tens of thousands yeah anyway mr paul halton yeah. we were talking about you there this is the the chap that i was talking to earlier what are your thoughts on rumors of an apple search engine what do you think chris could apple come in and take up some of the some of the space. Uh, I, I mean, they're in all the other markets. I think that their budget permits uh, to take market share from Google is really what you're asking. Do I think that they could do that? I think that anything's possible. I think that it'll, that it, Google's going to give them a run for their money. But um, I think that it's possible that you know some. It's already they have all the phones. They're already in everybody's pockets. It would just be easier, you know, click instead of Safari going to Google. It goes to you know safari.com or whatever you know <laughs> so yeah. You know, yeah yeah um i don't want to think about it because it's just going to give us a headache so i'm not yeah. answering one call. i mean why is bing even used because it comes on every computer it's on everybody's yeah. android phone you know it's like <laughs> yeah. So, yeah i mean listen it probably would be good for someone to give google a good shake and a run for the money it would be fun to learn a new one too i you believe know? it I'll believe it when I see it actually be launched. Um, so there's always these hearsay things, and oh yeah, we shall see. Ahrefs was supposed to do one, remember? Yeah, you're back. Um, is is Neil Patel not supposed to be building one as well? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or was that just a? I don't know if that was just a vicious rumor from you know those haters out there. That, I saw that, that in Reddit. You know, um, on that. <laughs> so yeah, we don't know. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, Elton yeah. Luther. By the way, guys, we are at quarter past five on the 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 time on the chat uh, and the the questions. Any further questions? Could you please put them in the comments rather than the live chat? We will come round to answer them later. No one ever does that. Um, they haven't done it yet, but we will try and blast through the last. 15, 20 minutes um, and give you as much value as we can for, for what's on there. But we've got like half an hour worth of um, stuff to go through. Um, but Elton Musa, hey guys, what's the highest number of PBNs you've managed and what, <laughs> what did you use to manage them, manage them Chris? I For certain particular clients where they were very receptive to certain strategies, the most I've ever like gone out, bought, set up was five where I was, I had full control over all of them. And it was simply there, a rebuild where I was using it for a link power. So five is the maximum I've ever, you know, put together and used. So that's so it. I have managed, I haven't actually counted them, but you know, thousands in the past. All uh, at one time? Yeah. Um, I was, wow. PBNs used to be my thing. Now, what I would say is wow. in terms of management, you need to delegate, work on spreadsheets, get VAs, systemize that stuff because there's no one tool to manage this. Now, I used to use something called Manage WP, which would go through, you would basically put all your websites on there and go through it and that would update all the plugins and all that kind of garbage. Um, you know, just all the kind of monotonous things that, that come with website management. And House. you would do that and you would like you would be updating say 200 websites five of them would blow up because a plugin conflicted or whatever and it would go down there was no notification of that or whatever so i think the only way you can effectively and manage pbns properly is to focus on quality pbns 
and add that manual element to them. There's no tool out there that can manage it. You know, stuff blows up, stuff goes down. You need to have that ability to log back in and restore back to the way it was because if you were like me, it was a mess and sites would blow up. And obviously the, the hosting company backs a website up for 30 days or 28 days or whatever it is. Um, but sometimes we didn't notice a website <laughs> had blown up um, for like two months and uh, we would go back and we'd lost the site and all that and it was just a, a proper mess and wow. <laughs> um, I think that's where you need to systemize, use VAs and uh, wow. there is no special tool out there to automate a lot of that process because with websites, we've all done it, even with my own personal website, stuff blows up. Um, you know, when you update a plugin and sometimes you need to restore a wee backup, you know, for, for whatever reason. So it's not easy. Quality over quantity is what I've done. I've cut back a lot of the PBNs because they were just, I mean, I, I was building PBNs before I knew what a PBN was because back in the, probably about 2008, I bought and, and stuff like that. I bought a load of exact match domains and that was my strategy, just chucking a website up one one page WordPress website and it would rank locally and, and I rented those websites out and I'd done that in a massive scale. So I was building them up and then obviously in comes PBNs and you start doing a bit more and you get greedy and the, the server costs were outrageous and it, it, listen, quality over quantity, there's no easy way of doing it. It's, it needs manual you know, interaction, sorry, but I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but so did you keep them like say you had five thousand? You would keep them segment segmented by like say niche, like okay, these are about marketing, these are about yeah. cars. And then when you got a client or a customer, you would just plug them into the network. Yep. Oh, that's sick. See, I if I were if I get somebody and they're cool and they have the budget, you know, I'll set them up a couple sites just to boost them like in a local market generally. Yeah. So I've never, but thousands, oh my God, five, that's like having five new sites that I had to sit there and, okay, do this, do this. Oh, it's it's that, like, that would be um, Just buy them. <laughs> just buy them. Yeah, buy them do that? The, the safest way because, yeah. listen, even, you know, when I remember having all these websites and it's wow. when Google then started to turn into, it, it was the first threat where they said, your website has to be mobile friendly or it's not going to rank anymore. And uh, my websites weren't mobile friendly. They were kind of responsive-ish, but we had to then install a plugin which made it mobile friendly and trying to do that across the websites. And then you're sitting going, the cost of making my network all mobile friendly is hundred grand, you know, or, or whatever. You know, it was outrageous amounts of money. It's just, there's always something and uh, it's just horrendous. So buy them, buy them. Yeah. <laughs> But Mr. Andy Woolley, any value in adding an FAQ or glossary to a site? Um, I'll give my opinion, but I'll let you go first, Chris. I think that there is value, plus you get to take up some more space in the SERP. But I think I I if the if the query uh can if it applies to the query, then yes, I would I would utilize it. I'm not sure what your opinion is though, Craig. Yeah. So I would add an FAQ. All the time, think it's oh, great okay. to do. Um, a glossary, though, um, is something a guy I know had tested, and I'm not going to give his niche or, or give his name, um, but a guy in the UK um, basically was buying expired domain names and grabbing glossaries from the Wayback Machine. And I'm telling you, the sheer scale of what he was getting a website moving at, using that glossary, was insane. So I think a glossary is a great thing for very, very niche specific keywords and you can get some real good traction out of that. So certainly, you know, FAQs, glossaries, why not? Absolutely. You, you can't give a, a valid reason why you wouldn't add them. I think, you know, there's, there's all going to be positive stuff that people would say if you ask that. So yeah, do it and do it in a massive scale. Um, Christian Gray, how much juice does optimizing career pages and profiles like uh, career builder, etc., bring? Is it worth it? I, I, I mean, if we're talking about uh, juice like link power, I, I wouldn't be looking at it as that aspect. But say a potential, I don't know what your industry is, but if somebody's going to look, I, I would say that 
you know, implementing that and having it proper is, is part of a overall good strategy. But as far as juice, link juice or power, eh, I wouldn't look at it as that. Nah. Um, if anything, look at it as if these pages are potentially draining your power. Because, um, you know, the more pages or more profiles you've got on your website, the link equity that you do have is being drained by those pages. So is it worth it? Are those pages valuable for Google to crawl an index? That, that's the way I'd be looking at that. And if they are, you know, if you've got some high profile person like Chris Palmer SEO, that, you know, on your website and you want to take advantage of his brand, then yeah, you know, have that and make sure that, that it does it. But if it's just Joe blogs and there's no search for it, absolutely no value in my opinion. So um, there you go. Yaniv, hey guys, in my local niche covering London, the number one competitor is a site with local pages with duplicate content, switching areas, no PBN and poor link profile. The main age is 2008. Is that why he ranks? I mean, that could be, uh, that's, that's hard to answer. I mean, by reading a comment, I, I would really have to look. I mean, I, I didn't even, I don't know, Craig. Mass <laughs> <laughs> page builders can work. You can rank with duplicate content. There's no denying that. Yeah. Is the main age the, the reason why he's still there? Potentially, you know, I've seen some real old websites that are terrible looking and they probably are up there because they're embedded into Google's index um, like a bloody part of the furniture. And uh, I've also seen like people, old websites renewing their website, like not renewing it, but freshening up things and, you know, maybe restructuring the website and they don't ever return. And uh, so I, I would say that domain age is potentially one reason, but um, I would probably say if your competitor is able to rank with duplicate content, just switching out the areas, then your niche is very poor and very weak. And I think sending some traffic, even doing 5% unique content should be enough for you to beat that guy quite easily, comfortably. Um, you know, don't go with a mass page builder as such, like having tens of thousands of pages, probably keep that to a couple of hundred, you know, if it's in London or you know, one of those areas and try and keep it condensed. But you, you're you basically saying that the guy's got no PBNs, he's got a crap link profile and he's, he's whipping everyone's backsides because he's got duplicate content. You know, Google Google has nothing else to serve in that niche and that's why that guy's ranking, I would bet. So um, that would be my opinion. Um, Randy Rodet. You bet strong PR news sites can pack a serious punch. They can do. Um, Ashton, giving a thank you. Um, Viddy is asking, you know, a lot of his way, a lot of his links are, you know, profile forums, social bookmarking, and all the, the junk of the day, as I would call it. Um, the question is if I grab a few good links, can I do well? It depends, really, in your niche. But a few good links are going to do better than what you're doing just now, put it that way. Would you agree with that, Chris? Absolutely, yes. Um, so, Ken, um, it's, I think this is more for you, Chris. Um, I love it. When, I'll tell you why in a minute. What is the brief outline of your CTR manipulation course and any special discount for your fans? <laughs> um, there's this guy on TikTok, actually, and I'll tell you that that's the reason I'm laughing. And the guy believes his own hype, and he's on TikTok, and uh, he's like, yeah, I'm big shout out to my fans and all that. And the guy thinks he's really a celebrity. It's so funny. Um, just when you said fans here, I'm like, oh, dude. Recall uh, that guy on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so um, so Chris, yeah, go ahead and answer. Uh, well, the brief outline, the outline is simple. Um, you know, it's sectioned in two parts. One is for the guy that has maybe five sites that just wants something that they could utilize that's very simple to implement. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if you want to scale it up, but it's, you know, it's not for everybody. It takes a lot of technical work and to get things to flow easily, you need a lot of resource. It's not cheap, right? But I, I'll show you what to do, the steps. Uh, and then, uh, and then I'm, I'm breaking down all the little intricate details like, Hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? Um, and then what I'm doing, I'm, I'm gathering up buddy, everybody to get like the times 
Uh, so if you want it, get it now because I'm going to gather up everybody to do a live session. The last time I did one, it was four hours, you know, so just to answer everybody's question in detail and then give away, not give away, but give you the strategies that I like to use. So some okay. of them. I'll get to Ken. Like I think it was Ken that likes a golden nugget as well. Um, I've got a golden nugget for you, Ken. Right, but I'm going to whisper it to you. Get Chris to do it for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so um, yeah, but um, Ken. And Ken, uh, message me on Facebook. I know that you've been a subscriber for a long time. Like not everybody, but message me. Um, I might be able to work out something. I do have a code. Uh, I, I'd be happy to offer a code for subscribers or fans. Like I've done it a few times. So yeah, message me. Cool. Um, Randy Rodé, for anyone that got, is the guy that I was talking about earlier with the press releases, that is in the live chat. He has put his legit gig, you know, for his press release. So you can get that there. Chris, I will send it to you after the show anyway, um, oh. to you direct. But that is Randy's gig and believe me I, I was actually skeptical about telling people about randy but fuck it um I, you know because he does a good job for me i don't want to tell everyone because then Rand, randy i hope that mine still gets put to the top of the queue because i don't want all these guys jumping in and making my press releases you know become wishy-washy so <laughs> yeah um, so, so when I searched, when I when I was looking at some of yours, those ones that I won't name the sites, but the ones that I was seeing, it was obviously a press release. I think you were promoting a training program that's from that gentleman. Yes. So does he write them or do you give him the content? No, he writes them. Oh, so I don't even have to. Oh, good, because I stink at writing. <laughs> oh, no, I just I, basically I go to Randy. Randy will say, "What you know? What angle do you want to go in at? Right, do my free training course, and." Uh, <laughs> He does it, and uh, yeah. I think within five days, he's like, hey, Craig, look at this. I've got your link in Yahoo Finance UK and the US, um, as well as, you know, i got a whole bunch of others. But, um, yeah, that's the gentleman responsible for that. Chris, you stalker, looking at my backlink profile. Keep eyes away. <laughs> um, Randy's a no way to hide this stuff from his dirty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to see what you're doing. I'm just curious, you know. I, I look at all the top guys. You know, I don't look at the, the B Deans and the Neils, but I look at all the guys that I respect. <laughs> Good to know I've got some respect. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Stephen Stewart is here. Good to see you, Stephen. Um, Ashton Lobo, uh, if a site has blocked crawlers for PBN links pointing to their website, can I can I check that? Um, you can. You can use a website like public www dot or something else that can scrape a website. The, the bot's not blocked, and, you know, there's a there's a few out there that are uncommon, um, if you like, in public www is one of those. Open you know, link profiler. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you can check that stuff. You know, some wise guys just block the Ahrefs and Sebrush bot and think that's the only bloody bot that exists. Um, so you can, by hook or by crook, <laughs> you can get to that stuff. Oh, yeah. But <clears throat> just... Don't don't use what Chris says. That's a bad word, Chris. Really? Open. Yeah. No, don't tell everyone, man. People will be <laughs> unraveling all my stuff. Only <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. one of them. I got a couple more. Uh, <laughs> are you better? Gary Parts is asking. Are you better to look for DA or PA to boost the homepage, Chris? What's your opinion? <laughs> When I'm looking at links, I hate to say this because I really love SEMrush. And for all my videos, I use DA and PA only because everybody knows what that is. But when Chris Palmer is going to look at links and profiles, I use TF and CF. I, look, I use DR. <laughs> Just to be <laughs> controversial. Um, but everyone... I look at two, really. Um, I, used to, I used to use Majestic, TF and CF. Um, but listen, they're all a guide, and uh, you know it just gives you that whether a page is is powerful or not. So I, I think these third party metrics, people say, don't listen to them; they're garbage. I still need that guide. I just need to know. I need someone to say that's a powerful link. Craig. Right. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I Gary. am starting though. I just just to try it out. A buddy of mine, I've been using his Ahrefs, Ahrefs, whatever. I, I do, I never 
I, I like the tool set. I think it's really cool. You know, like I, I like how I like it. I do like it, but I'm not, yeah. I'm not hopping on that wagon though. I'm still, I'm still rooting for SCM rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're always, it's weird how people are always one or the other. Yeah. Um, but we are nearly out of time. We'll just try and whiz through a couple of these last ones. All when right. I'm analyzing a local competitor's backlinks, I see mostly all the backlinks are do following the footers of high authority DA. Can I outrank if I create pages around the same keywords they are ranking? I would definitely build out the pages that they're building. Uh, if they're and then as far as the linkings, the links inside the inside the content are hold a little bit more weight. Um, and the header's more powerful than the footer. So hopefully that helps you. Yeah, hopefully that helps you. <laughs> um, we're getting a lot of thanks here as well from William Rock. Um, and Craig Mullins. Man, this guy, Craig Mullins, is everywhere, right? So I'll tell you a few stories about Craig Mullins. In the past two weeks, people have been like, do you know Craig Mullins? I'm like, yeah, do you? And it, like, I'm talking to people from different parts of the world here. And I, and I'm like, yeah, 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 I know I know Craig, he, he comes about and you know, I talk to him on Facebook and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know him as well, crazy guy and all that stuff. But I'm telling you, Craig Mullins is saying he uses Randy as well. This Craig Mullins is like, it must be a Craig thing. He's using the shit that I do. He does what I do. He stalks everyone's bloody YouTube, Facebook, He's connected to everyone, but it's great to see you here, Craig. Um, he is. Man, he's fucking in about everything. You know, he's now using Randy. I could have been speaking. I had a podcast with Randy yesterday, and uh, I think it was yesterday. It was in the last few days anyway. And uh, if Randy said to me, do you know Craig Mullins, I would have fucking chucked it at that point because this <laughs> Craig Mullins name keeps getting thrown up. So, <laughs> so you're doing something right anyway. Um one last question. Hi, guys. Craig, do you recommend CTR Booster Bot for SERPs or just YouTube videos? So, Raphael, I only use it for YouTube videos. Um, when I see it, or I've tried it on um, Google, the thing doesn't work. And I've seen a lot of people complaining in their group that it doesn't work for the, 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 the for Google search. But for me, the only thing I really use it for is basically the watch time kind of thing. Um, you know, try to, to push up the watch time. So I'm only using it for YouTube. People may use it for various other bits and bobs, but I've always only really felt that, uh, that, that it works well for that side of things. Um, but... Yeah, there's a, lot yeah. Of, there's a lot of panels too for YouTube. There's a ton of panels out there. Um, you know, like there's a lot of panels that that's the keyword you're looking for, though. Uh, social media panel, you'll find there's so many, and it's very, very helpful for some things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <it>. um, <laughs> also, finally, before we do knock off, and we will knock off in a second, um, Viddy Paul Craig, low, bu low budget link building. What I would say to video there is get the budget out of your head. But um, you know, I think there's no such thing as quality low low budget link building. But as Chris says, there are some quick wins, some citations, some niche edits. Mm -hmm. What else, Chris? You know, even Randy's PR stuff. I like. Cheap. Yeah, the press releases are really good, especially if they allow embeds. Um, I, I I think that uh, the niche edits are my always the go to for a quick cheap they already have traffic they have a lot of i i like niche edits it just depends on where you buy them but be careful because low budget does mean crap in a lot of cases by the way it doesn't stand for every case because what i would consider again i keep harping on about randy here but when i seen randy's prices i'm like this has got to be garbage it's too cheap um, and um, and but i tried it out like anything in life and it worked really well so cheap in most cases, is is low quality, but there, there are some good quality out there, and you've just got to get those good niche edits, good vendors, test. and uh, test them out and and see see where you, see where you go from there. What do you uh, generally pay for a niche edit? Twenty to fifty bucks. Yeah, no more than fifty, but no more than probably right. forty bucks actually. Um, so it just depends on the link. The, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, um, the power of it. But yeah, so that's that's the kind of going price. But guys, sadly, it's five past six. Um, Chris um, is a busy man and, and still working. Um, you know, still, still early on over there, so you yeah, still yeah. got a bit of work to be doing for the day. So we will end the show on that note, and we will be back next week as always for more of the same. So. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Thank you, everyone who commented, liked, and everything else. And thank you, Chris, for always coming on again. Thank and you. And make sure that you also look for Chris Palmer on his channel. A lot of good videos. Chris Palmer SEO on YouTube. Also check out his group on check Facebook as well. All right, guys. So catch you all later. See you. Bye. -bye. <laughs>